Hi, I'm Chase with Houston Frogs. Today we're going to be talking about Balbay's Cure Bill. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the orange, yellow, and mint localities. Now there's also a couple of live bred terrabillus, uh, for instance the orange blackfoot and the yellow blackfoot, both live bred by Tesoro State Columbia. But we're going to be focusing in on these three localities, orange, yellow, and mints. Now here at Houston Frogs, we have a group of mint terrabillus. We also have two groups of yellow terrabillus and two groups of orange terrabillus. They're very popular dart frog because of their bold personality and because they're known as the most toxic dart frog in the world. Now, they are so toxic that in the wild, if one were to hop on you, you could actually absorb the alkali toxins through your skin, making you very sick or possibly killing you. Now, of course, it's all diet-based. We'll be explaining that in another video here. Now, we're gonna be looking at our terribilis and talking about them as we do. Okay, so, Here's a group of yellow terribilis. So the number's outdated. We actually have three in here. It's specifically a 1.2. Uh, now terribilis are actually very, very, very um, communal. And why I, say, why I say communal, basically what I'm saying is they get along very well together. They're not going to be fine with each other. Now, this girl here has a nose rub that's being treated. Uh, this appeared one day. I'm not sure if it's because she was going underneath this log or not, but I've sort of moved things around and hopefully that stops happening. Now, we will be talking about dart frog care and other videos specifically treating medical issues. Here at Houston Frogs, we do treat all of our own frogs and we also treat the frogs of others completely for free. That's one of the big things. If you're local and you buy frogs from us, we will treat your frogs for completely free that you buy from us. The reason being is that we want to make sure that your frogs have the best care possible. That way they make it. Oftentimes, your dart frogs, if something happens to them, you only have a few hours, sometimes maybe a day to act before that serious issue could possibly lead to their death. Now, enough with that for now, because that's gonna be another video. But let me talk to you a little bit about these yellow terribils that we have here. Yellows and oranges are two different localities. You do not ever want to mix these, but they do have the same personality. They're very bold, as you can see here, not shy in the slightest. We do need a good amount of ventilation though. So this is a European style tank. As you can see, we have ventilation at the bottom and we also have ventilation at the top. That really helps not only with airflow to help keep this front glass clean, but it also helps with making sure that the leaf litter dries out in between misting. Now these were just misted about 20 minutes ago, so we still have water that's on the leaf litter, but this will pretty quickly evaporate to make sure that they have a dry surface to walk on. Now it's very important to keep the humidity high with turbulence, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that that leaf litter is drying out in between misting cycles. If you don't have enough ventilation, and if that leaf litter does not dry out in between misting cycles, then you can have foot blisters that occur with these and some other phyllobates, leading to them eventually hobbling around on them, getting skinny and dying. So it's very, very, very important that you have a well ventilated varium. I wouldn't necessarily rank these as being beginner dart frogs. I'd rank them as being more intermediate because of their ventilation requirements. Although they have a really great personality and quite frankly would make a good beginner dart frog if you are very knowledgeable about them before you acquire them. Another big thing about them is they're one of the few dart frogs you can actually feed small crickets to. Now, with most dart frogs, I'm going to recommend fruit flies. As you can see here, we actually have some Hydei fruit flies, golden Hydei, hanging out on this Ludicea jewel orchid. However, you can feed them pinheads on occasion if you would like to, or you can feed them those as a stable feeder, although it's going to be a lot more expensive than culturing your own fruit flies, which again, is gonna be in our video. Now, Terribilis, one of the big things about these, they're from Colombia. And they actually, although most dart frogs have to have very low temperatures, these are kept very well at 72, 74, 75, 76 degrees, but they can survive a little bit higher temperatures than what other dart frogs can. 
I'm not going to suggest that you do keep them at 80 degrees, 82, 83 degrees. Most star frogs that would be fatal for. Uh, but these, if for some reason your AC goes out, which hopefully it never happens to you, hopefully you have a backup generator like I do, then these will probably be one of the few dart frogs that do end up surviving. Um, again, all my dart frogs are kept at 72 degrees ambient air temperature. That's going to mean that the vivariums are generally about 74 to 75 degrees. Um, but if things ever went awry, these could survive a little bit higher temps. The other big thing about these uh, Phyllobates terribilis is that, again, they get along very well together. Uh, generally, they're kept best as groups of three or four, uh, but you could possibly even keep groups of uh, five or six individuals together if there's a big enough space. Now, of course, this is a 22 inch by 18 by 18. Uh, I do have another group that is doing great in a 10 gallon. I have another group that's doing great in a uh, 18 cube. And another one that's doing very well in a 22 inch by 18 by 18 or uh, 24 high. Now let me show you the other ones real quick. Now these are orange blackfoot terribilis. These were specifically line bred by Tesoros State Columbia to have black feet, which I'll see if I can zoom in on any of them to show you. Let's see, where are you little guys? They like to sometimes congregate behind this log here, which is not great for videoing, but that's okay. So these are specifically from the orange locality. Again, they're not ones that you're going to want to mix with the yellow localities. Uh, they are different. Now the coloration of orange can shift from being very bright orange to sometimes looking almost yellowish. Unfortunately in the hobby we have had some people to mix the orange and yellow localities. Uh, that's why it's very important to know the lineage of your dart frogs and to know where they come from. Here at Houston Frogs we make sure that you're going to get the actual orange locality or the actual yellow locality but sometimes you're going to be getting them from places that do not keep lineage and thereby you could potentially get a mixed frog. Now let's take a look at some of the other ones that we have. This is a small group of mints that we're raising up. So you can see these two little ones here. They just sort of freeze when you take the glass off of them. Yep, freeze frame. Uh, one of the things I love about these little guys is that they almost never, ever, ever jump outside the vivarium. Now, some frogs will jump outside the vivarium very easily, very quickly, like Rantamaya, for instance. But honestly, Terribilis are almost like little trained dogs. Uh, very, very personable. Um, they come to the glass to beg you for food whenever they run out of fruit flies because they are intelligent enough to know that you are their food source. And they're very, very intelligent so far as not trying to commit suicide by jumping outside the vivarium. Uh, one of the big things I love about them. So if uh, you're going to be building a vivarium, then make sure, now this has glass on top, but also has ventilation. So that's a piece of glass sitting on the top and it has a corner cut out of it for ventilation. If you're building a tank, that's very important for them. I have a lot of Mark Gravia growing in here. I have some rabbit's foot fern, philodendron, etc. Let's take a look at some of the others that we have here. Here's a 10 gallon that we have. This again has the ventilation. This is 3D printed here. This is going to be a new product we'll be releasing. Terribilis do eat a lot, so generally I'm going to be putting a lot of flies in here for them. They are also some of the most prone frogs to getting obese as well, so it's very important to monitor them and not only make sure they're not getting too skinny, make sure they're not gaining too much weight as well. Let me put this back. Now, so far as enclosures are concerned, um, since they are not near as territorial as what tinctorious are, 
They don't necessarily need to have a giant tank, but at the same time, the more space that you can offer them, the better because these are bigger frogs. Here are some orange turbillas here. That female most likely has eggs. I think that she may have laid already. Oh, there's some eggs there. I'll have to collect those later. Gonna turn that like that. Okay. But anyways, if you're looking at getting dart frogs and you're can considering terabellus, and again, you know all the requirements, I'd say go for it. Um, again, the bigger the space that you can give them, the better. I really like having them in a 22 inch. Again, the 10 gallons are because we are limited on space and because the frogs are still very healthy and happy in those. But if you want a really nice display tank, then you really can't go wrong with a 22 inch or an 18 cube. So again, if you have any questions on Terabilis or any other dart frogs, then feel free to email us at houstonfrogsyahoo.com. You can also message us through a Facebook page. Make sure to like that, subscribe, and be looking for other videos that we'll be doing.